Okay, guys, part three, the finale. Let's finish her up. Click on the back view. Zoom in nicely. Let's make a sketch on this surface. And see how this rotated over to the side and now my rear is sideways. This is a bug that I found and submitted. So basically what happens is for some reason the sketches turn 90 degrees. But of course, all we really need is one hole here. So we don't have to do much sketching, so it's not going to really affect us. So of course, I've attached that to the center point, gone out. And now I want to give this a diameter. And if you remember, the diameter of our Lego pegs are all 4.8. There you go. And now we can close this up. And we're going to go back here. Let's make a pocket. And just like last time, let's go 2.2. And we got ourselves a cutout. Now, of course, we've got another hole that we want to do here. And the way I want to do that is by making a pattern. This is an option called linear patterns, and it is very commonly used. It is an awesome, awesome feature. If you ever need to make a lot of things that are equal spaced apart, this is your best friend. Click on your pocket. That's the feature we want to make a pattern of. Click on the pattern. And it will ask us, first of all, how many do we want and how far apart do we want them? So we want these eight millimeters apart. And the reason is our Lego blocks here are exactly eight millimeters apart. So that's the pattern we want to follow. And it's going to say, where do you want to go? So our direction, we want to go on along the Z axis. But look, nothing's showing up. That's because it usually goes to the positive and downwards is the negative axis. So if we reverse direction, is that not awesome? Let's center this up. And what I want to do is make a cutout here. And this cutout is going to be a little bit tricky, but I'll show you exactly how it's done. So I'm going to click on the surface. Then I'm going to create a sketch. And it rotated it again. And I want to create another hole that is the same size as this hole. So we'll come here. We'll bring, make that big. And of course, we'll use our editing mode here. We'll give it the right diameter, 4.8 millimeters. Let's go. Beautiful. And I kind of want to bring this edge out, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to because it's a curved surface. So you know what? We're into experimental territory here. And let's see if we can do this. Click that here. Click that edge. Oh, we are golden. Okay, so I want to create an offset from this edge by 2.5 millimeters. Now, if you remember, if I actually drew a line here right now and I trim it, it's going to get rid of that constraint. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to create a reference geometry. So click here to make this turn blue. So I'm going to make this a line. Now that I've got this line selected, I want to go from here to here by 2.5 millimeters. And now that I got this guy going, I could make a line that goes from here to here. And I could cut the line without cutting my reference geometry. It might be a little tricky, but we'll do it. Now there's another line here, if you notice, in the circle. And I kind of want to bring this forward too. So let's do that. Let's click here. Let's see if we can select that. Come on, please, 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 please. Beautiful. And now that we have this guy going, let's build a real line. What I'm going to do is create another line. I'm kind of going to attach it to this guy. So I'm going to go from here and I'm going to go out to here. And now that should be even. And you see it allowed me to do that. It's constrained to here. It's just the length that's not constrained. So now let's use our trim tool and let's see if we can select just this, the proper line. I don't want to select this line. I want to select this guy here. So I'm going to select this guy and hit trim and look at that. He'll trim me right to the edge of that. That's beautiful. And I'm going to go to this guy here and I'm going to create a trim right there. And he's going to trim me to this guy right there. Well, the next thing I kind of want to do is trim this circle. So if I click here, it's going to trim me up to here. See how I got that going? Now, the one thing that I'm not sure about when this rounds off for the graphics is whether this is actually enclosed yet. 
and I'm hoping that this is closed up and everything's okay. I can, of course, click check on our degrees of freedom here and see where where I'm not constrained properly. And it says these guys here. If I highlight that like that, I should be able to select both sides and click here. We'll do the same thing there. We'll click and constraint. And now I got two degrees of freedom left. And I'll be honest, I don't know where those two degrees of freedoms are. So I'm going to click my degrees of freedom button here. And look at that. I got this guy because it wants to know what the length of this guy is, even though he's just a reference line. So, you know, what? let's let's give it that. Hey, check that out. It actually did it by itself because I had it selected. Neat. Sure. And where's my next one? Let's, let's try this again. Degrees of freedom. And I'm not sure why it's just selecting this one. Let's grab it and move it. Ah, because I can move it left and right. Interesting. Well, you know what? Let's do this then. Our equal. Go from here and here and put that equal to our center or our axis right there. And now we're fully constrained. It's happy. It's green. I like that. So the next thing we want to do here is create a pocket. Now we've already gone in about 2.2 millimeters. But I want to go in a little deeper because, of course, I need to be able to run that peg in the middle. So let's make this pocket here. So create pocket. And here, five millimeters is too much. As you can tell, it's going to put us way into the cut in territory. So, of course, we can measure this out exactly or we could just use this. That doesn't look too bad, does it? What do you think? You think that will work? So let's go OK. Now, what I think the problem is going to be here is that this geometry is a little too deep. If you remember, we went in by 2.2. Let's reduce that down. Let's go 1.9. Just give it that little bit of a buffer area because a Lego block is 1.7. I like that breathing space. And then when you come back here, hit space to show it. And of course, we are still good. So the last thing we need to do here is, of course, put the hole right in the center there. So let's select here, let's sketch, and see it's flipping my sketches around. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It makes me angry and confused. If any of you catch that reference, put it down in the comments, go get a high five. So select the circle there from the center. It is a diameter of 2.36. Click OK, click Close, and you know what? Just another pocket, right? And it's going to ask us how far do we want to go? Look at that. We're cutting in here up to first. And I'll cut it here. Now, look, see the holes right there. And this is why I wanted to decrease the size of this. Because if you, even if you look at the real Lego man, this is a very thin wall. And of course, we're not able to fit in here. Look at that. So we're going to have to make this guy a little bit bigger. Let's go back to this pocket. We'll edit the pocket and we'll add a little bit more and a little bit more. So we'll go to four millimeters. Click OK. Go back here, space. And how close are we? See, we're not that bad. You can try to tweak that down if you wanted to, but just remember there's a little bit of a barb right here on the waist. I'll just adjust it just for fun. Let's go to 3.6. Just pick that number out of a hat, just out of thin air. And look at that. And that looks a little bit more even. So there's one more thing we have to do. You see, there's a little bit of a slant on a Lego man leg. If you measure it at the bottom, you're going to get 7.8 millimeters. But if you measure it at the top, you're only going to get 6.7 millimeters. So we got to put that slant in. Or select the front face and sketch on that. I want to bring in this edge. So let's bring that in right here. We'll just use our little cut tool here. So what I want to do is take our poly tool. Let's get her right there. And I'm just going to start at this edge. We're going to go up too relatively close because we don't really have to be super duper close but it just have to be close enough and i'm going to go out down 
and over. Okay, so now that I have this guy drawn, let's introduce a fixed distance, so our height. And let's go from this guy to this guy. And of course, it's embarrassing because I just missed. Come on, guys. So the height is 14.72 millimeters, and that will get us our proper height. Now the next thing is, I know the width of this guy, and I know the width of this guy should be. So I just need that offset. Get that through a horizontal tool. So click here. Click here. And you know what? Again, I'm lazy. Let CAD do the math for me. 7.18 millimeters. Subtract that by 6.70. And it'll get me an offset of 0.48. There you go. Close that up. And of course, you know what we're going to do. We're just going to pad that out. So if we click here, you can see that it's only going in one direction. If we make it symmetric to plane, it's now going in both directions. And we have to make sure we have this number large enough to fit everything. So I'll just go 10 millimeters, click OK. And there you go. We are done. That is how you make a Lego man leg. So there's just one more thing I want to cover before we go. The channel has grown a lot since I started this uh, series, and it's all thanks to you guys liking and subscribing. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Stay smart. Stay safe.